I'm starting to pull that one. Nectar. Nectar. I'll grab the camera. Shoot. Some honey. Some pollen. Pollen. This side. Some honey. Brood. Yeah, it could be some. Yeah, there's brood in there. That's good. A little bit of honey. More brood. Okay, more, that's good. More brood. It's good to see brood on there. Brood. Brood and honey, so that's good. Brood and honey. Okay. Let me see there. So I read in that book that, you know, when you start seeing good brood and stuff, you probably shouldn't keep digging into them. Alright, so we're good. And we don't have to put anything else because they still have empty comb to use. Yeah. I wish they would build a little faster, but... Well, it's just starting, so... Yeah, I mean, if we put sugar out water out now, they're not going to use it. No, I mean, they're bringing in... Other than watching, they're bringing in plenty of... Okay. Okay, so we have uh, checked that hive, and it, it looks small. It's still small. This one was a smaller hive that we had last year, and it's still kind of small, so... We'll just have to see how she, how she does this year. Who knows? This year is the one that didn't, this is the hive that didn't make it last year through winter. As you can see all this collapsed down in here, so we're just going to collect all this wax so we can use that. All this old brew comb. And we'll do, the, we can harvest all this. Oh, you should have got a bag. There's going to be a lot of it. Oh, well, this is our hive that didn't make it. See all the poor little dead bees. Heartbreaking, really. Feel kind of responsible for them, you know, and they die, but everybody has bees that die, don't make it, hives that don't make it, so. So. We will melt down the wax, sift it clean, and do something with it. At least, we can, at least we can harvest some wax. Yeah. Wax is worth as much as honey. Unfortunately, there are bees in it. Yeah, you have to be careful because even though they're dead, they can still sting you. All this has collapsed and. Oh, heartbreaking. Been eating on them. That's okay. Just heartbreaking. Something likes it. Let's see, that's it. That's a good starter comb. 
So if we leave that top part on there, like that. Yeah. They can just build on it. Okay. In the future. Because we're not going to give up. Just because we failed on this one, it didn't mean... Well, like I was saying, the quit. experienced beekeepers lose beehives every year. Yep. So... Something build a nest in there. Yeah, it's a damn chipmunk. Chipmunk. I saw him yesterday. He came in here and I was like, uh-uh. You know you're not supposed to be in there. Well, he's just found a good place to make a home. For his babies. For his little babies. Look at that. Yep. So we can seal it up and put it in there. Sorry, Chippy. Not here. You have plenty of places to live. And not in my shed either, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a fix we did. Oh yeah. Last year with the hair clips. Hair clips and see how they built around it. So now what you would do is you take your knife. Where's your knife at? Um it's sticking in the ground over there. Sticking in the ground. So what you could do now is you could simply cut it out with a knife. And if it had bees, you could do this. Well, more carefully, of course. And pull this out. And then you end up with a big hole, and they will fill that up and fix it. Okay, this is our watering. There's a bumblebee. Getting a drink of water. Going to be. This is our watering station. We got some rocks in there so they can land on the rock and get a drink of water. That there is a bumblebee. It's not a one of our bees. But this is our little water station I have set up for them. It's our source of water. And it's just a five gallon container that I put on this dog, this old dog waterer. There's some rocks in there and call it a day. As you can see there are no dead bees in there so they've been doing good about not getting in the water and drowning. Oh, Again the chipmunks, or a chipmunk, has been getting into this old getting into this old hive that's not occupied right now. So, we gotta figure out a way to keep her out of there. I'm trying to build a nest. She's going through our electric fence without getting shocked, of course, because it only shocks every few seconds it pulses. So, the bunny rabbits and the chipmunks have been able to get in here which is fine we'll deal with it all right so that's that check our B check that we just did and it looks like uh, everything is okay I mean that the hive is really small so it's kind of like eh, I don't know if it's gonna be okay this year uh, it's still spring, so we'll see. I know they've been bringing in a lot of pollen, so we'll see how she works out. Turn on our electric fence. As you notice, I have the it facing away. And the reason why it's facing away and you have to reach around is because bears are very smart. Very smart. They'll figure out how to turn that electric fence off and get in there if they know there's food. Once they figure out there's food in there, and they want to eat that larva, bee larva. And then the honey, that's just a bonus. But with the electric fences, I've heard 
that once a bear has figured out that there's food there and you have an electric fence, what they'll do is they'll swing by there every night, in some cases, just to check. Make sure the fence is on. Okay, the fence is on. I'll go on. And they'll do this every night. And then one night, when you forget to leave the fence, turn the fence back on, they'll be like, oh, it's turned off. And then they'll go in and get their snack. That's how intelligent bears are. They'll get into anything. Change, take off my outfit. beeswax. I'm gonna put it in a pot, break it up, put it in a pot, be careful I don't sting myself. Probably gonna take several um, doings. So this is from our bees, um, the hive that didn't make it. And there is a lot of dead bee, old nectar, old um, larvae and stuff in here. So now I'm gonna fill this with water. And there's lots of different ways you can do this. I read about this one. It's one I want to try. I haven't done it like this before. But I want to give it a shot. Try it. See how it works. And then we're just going to put this on the oven. as good as this try. I'm going to turn it on low and I'm going to turn it on like really, really low. So we don't want it to boil. We don't want to do it too fast or too hot. So I'm going to try to go as low as I can. It's going to take a while, several groups to get a lot of wax. But So that is the start. I just I broke up the hive pieces. In the uh, into the pan, and I put a lot of water in the pan, and so now the idea is that the wax will just slowly melt, and we'll just keep doing that till I get to the bottom of the wax, and then we'll go on to the next process. Now I'm going to get my bigger piece of cloth because I'm going to need it. 
Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to break it up so it'll fit and make like a little bag. Make it easier to fit down in the water. I'm trying to double up my uh, my cheesecloth to help prevent particles and stuff. So we're gonna make a bit of a bag out of it, like this, a little bag. I'm just gonna put it in the water so it will melt. Okay, so now after trying to catch the house on fire and making a mess and spilling wax everywhere, we will just let this settle out and cool off. You said it there. So it's finally um, cooled off enough and the uh, wax has solidified, so let's see what we end up with. We're going to pour the water out, and here we go. There is a disc of wax. Now you'll see that there is some particles still in there, and that's okay. We got the big chunks out. Um, in some countries, that that's how... They prove that it's pure because they have bee parts. Well, we just have some little fine grit, so that's all right. Not a problem. That's it. That is our little blob of wax. There we go.